おはようございます。Good morning, everyone.、Uh, welcome to our international colloquium entitled Language Use and Symbolic Power. My name is Teruhito Sako,、uh, professor of sociology in Tokyo Metropolitan University, and、uh, I'm the host of this conference. And, and、uh, we have uh, uh, today seven guests, two guests from the University of Sheffield,、uh, please stand up, Dr. Phil Whittington. He is a you know, leading historian of early English modernity, and uh, uh, we have a, a close connection for those 10 years or so.、Okay? And、uh, look at this.、Uh, this is not a telephone directory,、uh, this is the Oxford Handbook of Thomas More's Utopia. This is the anniversary book of the publication of Thomas More's Utopia, 500 years anniversary. Uh, uh, project, and、uh, I contributed a, a chapter uh, concerning translation of uh, uh, Thomas More's Utopia in Japanese. And Phil is one of the pioneers of applying、uh, text analytics techniques to the study of cultural history. And、uh, Dr. Hugo Dobson,、uh, he is specialized in the、uh, East Asian studies, especially in Japan, the、so、diplomatic relations with. Uh, global community in general. And we、uh, today have a very、uh, interesting and stimulus、uh, presentation concerning the icons, iconographic study of the international、uh, global summits. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we have three more guests from inside Japan as well Dr. Naoto Hashimoto from Kobe University. He is a specialist of the German、uh, history of social sciences, especially Max Weber.、Uh, we may find、uh, another、uh, unknown aspect of Max Weber, Dr. Nobuyuki Kojima. He has a really wide ranging interest、uh, spanning from Japanese anime to the Japanese constitution, legal problems. So、uh, they're quite similar to me. I also have a very broad interest. Uh, every corner of the social sciences. And、uh, from TMU, Masayuki Shioya, he is a, a cultural sociologist, can I say? Cultural sociologist of、uh, early 20th century Japan, right? <laughs> And、uh, Shizuka Kono, she finally received her PhD yesterday. And uh, uh, we have a really fresh and uh, uh, stimulating uh, presentation concerning her real time、uh, academic achievements. You know,、uh, in this colloquium, each presenter has 45 minutes,、uh, including, including、uh, simple questions and answers. And after that,、uh, two presenters present their papers, and we have、uh, 30 minutes discussion time. So, Uh, please uh, make your comments or give us、uh, your questions freely. Okay. <clears throat> uh, それから、えー、オンラインで参加している日本の方、大勢いらっしゃるんですけれども、あのクエスチョンとありましたらば、テキストで、えー、この Zoom のです、ね、テキスト機能を使ってご質問を寄せていただけると。えー、後で大変助かりますちゃんとあの運営スタッフを用意しないで、本当に手弁当でこのイベントやっていますので、その辺のご協力をお願いします。Now, let's go to my presentation.My、uh, research interest has long been、uh, lying in the conceptual history of quite fundamental、uh, social science keywords, such like、uh, society itself. Or gender.、Uh, in recently,、uh, I'm quite interested in the conception of states, state h o k a These studies went beyond merely exploring、uh, the etymology of the key word,、uh, clusters rather. I like to inquire into the history where the semantic shift of、uh, keywords have not only altered the cognitive. Frameworks of those who employ them, but have also transformed the realities of social relationships. 
in the real world. So as such, my research is highly culturally, cultural and historical, and in addition, genuinely sociological in nature. As you know, usually uh, nobody questions about the existence of state, <laughs> right? Uh, it is likely that everyone here believes in the existence of state, be it in Japan or the United Kingdom as well. And uh, even in social sciences specialists, it is common to assume the existence of the state provided with the definition and the commence research in each field. So naturally, uh, Max Weber, the world famous champion of social sciences, is sought to have followed this approach. Famously, uh, Weber, in his speech, uh, Politics as a Vocation, uh, 1917, as well known, defined the state as the only human community which lays claim to the monopoly on the legitimate use of physical force. This is uh, Weber's definition of the state. But I think it is worth noticing that he said just before this famous de definition, he says, just before the definition, the state cannot be defined in terms of its activities. This is because there is not only no task that has not been undertaken by some state, but also because there is no task that is exclusively undertaken by the state. This is the most important uh, description of uh, the state by Weber. He says, uh, state is very, very difficult to def define. Every definition fails necessarily. And uh, here, uh, Weber is confessing that the extreme difficulty of discerning the true nature of the state. I believe that this aspect is more crucial than his famous definition of the state. You know, the state is, according to Weber, much more plastic and much more polymorphous than we usually perceive. And uh, scholars, uh, recent scholars such as Michael Mann and uh, Neil Brenner have successfully carried forward this aspect of Weber's work, going deeper into the ever-changing nature of the state, as you see here. I agree with them. Today, I follow this line of thought, try to describe what has been referred to as the state in the past. In this case, in modern Japanese printing cultures in general, using text mining techniques. I've been cultivated the text mining methods such, uh, since 1990s. So I'm uh, genuinely, uh, I can say, I am a, a pioneer of this kind of analytical method in social sciences. And today it is so-called computational social science or text mining or text analytics, as you know. And in the near future, I will put all my research findings together, uh, redraw the entire modern Japanese history of social sciences and uh, its relation to the today's Japan or future Japan. Today, my source, my data source is the Japanese National Diet Library online book catalog. Uh, the Japanese National Diet Library is really excellent a library who are trying to uh, digitize the uh, existing printing materials into the uh, you know uh, computer searchable uh, formats. And uh, as you see, uh, uh, NDL uh, already have uh, over three point five hundred thousand modern Japanese books uh, available online. Uh, digitally searchable. And this time I use uh, book titles, only book titles and only their chapter titles. Spanning from uh, 1868, it is the uh, opening phase of Japanese modernization. 
uh, from to the nineteen twenty nine. Uh, it is the uh, uh, beginning of the crisis era of Japan. And uh, today, uh, I deal with uh, the key word state and nation. In Japanese, state is koka. In Japanese, nation is kokumi. These two key words. The book titles that uh, contain the letter string state uh, is about uh, amount, 300. And nation is more than that. Uh, it's about 1,400 data entries. And uh, uh, the excellent database of the NDL, uh, the OCR ac ac uh, accuracy rate is 70%. So it's not high enough even today, but in near future, they improve their uh, OCL system and uh, make it more higher. But it is useful for my today's purpose. Enough. Okay, and now uh, in this presentation, I will tell you the same story three times. The first one will provide a bird view picture which summarizes my research outcomes briefly. You can see here. And so the second term, uh, I uh, go into the text binding technique. And finally, uh, we pick up the example of each characteristics of, of each errors, okay? Now, this is the first table. It shows you the broad view picture of my research consequences. The Japanese full-scale full -scale modernization started by the 1860s, as you know. In the earliest period of uh, the Japanese state arose from quite practical needs. Uh, on the one hand, the Japanese elites at the time needed to present their country as a diplomatic entity. So their interest is not on uh, Japanese inside dwellers, but uh, they have many messages to send to the outer worlds. Okay, so it is interesting to know that the Japanese earlier constitution code was written for the foreigners, okay? Not for Japanese dwellers. Because they justify their uh, existence as a diplomatic subject uh, to the Western superpowers. In doing so, they intended to be recognized as equal by their counterpart Western superpowers. And on the other hand, uh, they tried to persuade the Japanese inhabitants that the uh, you know, newly formed Japanese state would make them stronger and more prosperous. It was symbolized by the word hygiene. And in the, the same earliest period, the nation, Nation had almost no clear uh, positive relationship with the state. There is no interest from the uh, nation to the state. The nation at the time understood as a brand new, uh, cool, uh, stylish, vogue people of the time was called nation. Kokumi, Fu. Uh, acquired new techniques, fashion, and manners. Uh, as you know, the Edo uh, government, Edo regime, strictly prohibited the information from the outer world. So uh, when they open their country to the outer world, uh, they are very thirsty about the new uh, information and knowledge from the outer world. And uh, the only nation who had obvious linkage between the state was, you know, conscribed adult males, dra drafted soldiers. And the second stage, after Japan successfully established the constitutional code in 1889, 
they made military challenges, military expansion to the uh, mainland China or Russia. In these war efforts, the Japanese state began to be described in the publication culture as a fiscal and bureaucratic entity. At the same time, the state created the family state analogy to mobilize the Japanese dwellers through the universal education system. So it, it has a positive relation uh, to the expansion of the concept of a nation as a soldier of the state. Children are soldiers of the state tacitly because they, when they grew up, they became to be a soldier, right? The image of nation as the state soldier grew rapidly and uh, broadly in this period. And this is an irony, but however, the victory against Russia was, uh, you know, bitter for the nation as the state soldiers because Japanese government failed to get the compensation money from Russia. In the first instance, state justify itself as a practical and uh, uh, you know pragmatic fiction, useful to improve the inhabitants' life in general, but they sacrifice their lives in the wars. And after that, the Japanese government failed to get the uh, compensation money from Russia. The nation's anger exploded. And they lose the credit for the state government generally. The nation began to suspect the practical utility of the uh, earlier state. And uh, also, Japan was on the winner's side in the First World War. The Japanese government failed again. They lost their uh, interest in the uh, Chinese continent. And finally, the nation's self-understanding lost and drifted. They, look for, they looked for the new identity and finally find themselves as the emperor's children. So uh, I have to say that they constructed the highway that led them to uh, self-destruction. <clears throat> in coming 1930s to 1940s. These are the entire story of my recent study. And this is the uh, <clears throat> sample page retrieved from the NDA online. You know, uh, you can see the microfilmed and uh, uh, digitized uh, page by page of each books of over uh, 300,000. And in the left side, you can see this, okay? This is digitized, all see all uh, <clears throat> searchable digital texts. So you can search all those texts according to their interest. Uh, let's go to the second turn. The table shows the general overview of my research materials uh, concerning state and nation. You can see total publication in the right side <clears throat> refers to the entire title number of the book publications in Japan. Get this line in every five years. And uh, you can see the state on the left side. It refers to the title number of the books which contains the letter string state, Kuka. And the middle one, you can see the book titles which contains nation, Kukumi. And uh, generally, you can see the patterns of the increase and decrease are roughly the same. It is not the uh, linear line development, but decreasing moment is uh, equal to the war time, as you see here, you can see the decrease of the number. 
And here, this is the effect of uh, Russo-Japanese war. And uh, this decrease is uh, the consequence of the uh, First World War. And the uh, increase or decrease are uh, generally the same in uh, state books and the nation's books. And this is the core findings from the text analytics. The left one indicates the major color case with the state in each about 10 years or five years, collocation trends. And the right one uh, is the major collocation with state, uh, I'm sorry, nation. And you can see in the earliest period, state co-occurred, collocated with law, government, and sovereign, and in addition, society. In the war period, the state collocates with education here and FISC. And after the uh, First World War, the state collocate with society increasingly. On the other hand, <clears throat> nation, you can see here, handbook. Handbook uh, refers to how-to book, uh, you know, how to uh, be a cool and a nice vogue people, uh, like how to wear the nice clothes and how to uh, talk with others nicely. This kind of book. And you can see the decrease of handbooks for 30 years or 40 years, okay? And uh, conversely, nation military collocation grew. You can see. And uh, after the uh, search for the new identity, nation become to uh, have strong collocation with history and religion. This is very clear in consequences. Okay, now, so let's go to the third term of my presentation. Uh, I pick up some uh, typical books from the, each period. You can see this one uh, in Japanese, kokkaraku, uh, in English, science of the state. Uh, this is the monumental work written by Nagao Arga. He is uh, uh, virtually the first thinker who systematically deal with the state and the legal aspect of the state and the military aspect of the state and the administrative aspect of the state. This book represents the earliest stage of the Japanese state. And Ariga represents the earliest legal logic of justifying the existence of Japanese state to the Western powers. It followed the German state theories at the time articulated how, uh, sorry, articulated who hold the sovereign authority. And at the time, Japan uh, has nothing done, nothing more than the uh, Tenno uh, emperor, uh, ancient emperor. As you see the figure, a photo of uh, Meiji emperor, uh, prior to the opening of the country, uh, this is, you know, uh, the Japanese way of uh, uh, fashion and uh, uh, as the Japanese modernization proceed, he changed his uh, fashion style as a Western one. This eloquently suggests that the Japanese modernization and the uh, constitutional court were made for Western people. It is not to the uh, Japanese dwellers. And why should the Japanese state exist? It is to increase distributable resources and rectify the inequalities in a Japanese society. It is for, for the inside Japan, Japanese dwellers. One more typical book I can pick up, the uh, Shinpei Goto's Principle of State Hygiene. Uh, this is the first description of Japanese inside administration. 
they persuade the Japanese people why the Japanese state exists. Because uh, Japanese state uh, improve the inhabitants' hygiene situation. This is the, the earliest justification for the inside Japanese dwellers of the uh, state. And in this case, uh, goto uh, include uh, as a hygiene, education, policy, and urban planning in general. And you can see this picture uh, show the shows the uh, such kind of the nature of the earliest Japanese intra-Japanese uh, administration from 1870s through the uh, opening of. 20th century, Japan was plagued by five waves of cholera, uh, resulting in the deaths of over uh, many thousands of people. The picture uh, metaphorically depicts cholera as a monstrous tiger, illustrating the, the effort of the military hygiene corps battling against cholera. In the earliest, same earliest period, you can see that the nation had a, a strong very, very strong collocation with the practical handbooks, as you see, which teach the readers how to be a cool, hip, vogue person. And you can see it, de uh, see it uh, decreased continuously after that. And you can see the growth of the nation military collocation in inverse proportion. So let's look at the some typical practical books of this period. The practical book literature is really huge and uh, toxically interesting. I can't stop reading. There were three kinds in this kind of handbooks. And this one was a handbook for the urban people who had their own shops or offices in an urban area. The book described how to write an admirable letter to someone, how to be a pleasant person, what is an agreeable manner when you welcome customers, and so on. And the latter was for the uh, handbook for the rural people. Uh, it tells us how to uh, cultivate the land, how to brew, how to find someone to marry. It's toxically interesting. And we can find this kind of uh, picture. Uh, according to them, these are the cool persons. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> This is the uh, higher official the image. Uh, this is a uh, big merchant. This is, uh, he's a doctor. He's a Congress representative and uh, something like that. This is the cool persons in this time. And in addition, in the same period, we can find the seed uh, of the Japanese nation. This book, Uchida uh, Yasukuni, uh, says uh, every male should be a nation. Uh, he means the state soldier, uh, because uh, at the time, a lot of people do not prefer to be drafted, of course. But after successfully establish the constitutional court, Japan project to uh, invade the uh, outer world and the war, three wars. And in that process, uh, this kind of uh, literature grows. Uh, Mr. Kobayashi uh, wrote a book about uh, uh, state finance. And Mr. Higuchi he wrote a book about the compulsory education system. And uh, you can find this line 
Mr. Higuchi says, children are not the possession of parents, but rather assets of the state as a future soldier. So uh, the Japanese uh, nation as a state soldier grow in this line. Uh, this is similar to Higuchi's writing. Mr. Ishii says, women to bear and nurture the children who will become the state soldier in near future. That's striking. That, that's really striking. <clears throat> As I said, after the Russo-Japanese War, uh, Japanese nation got angry about the consequence of the uh, diplomatic communication uh, against Russia. After the Russo-Japanese War, and particularly after the First World War, the Japan's, Japanese nation, as the state soldiers disappointed by the government's diplomatic failures, you can see the sharp rise of nation religion collocations. Also, you can see the big wave of the state society collocation as well in 1920s. The existing standard theory detected this trend, but as we already saw, state-society dichotomy was the most important conceptual step for the earliest Japanese state series. <clears throat> you can see the nation's identity lost, drift and bewilderment because of the idea lost. The Japanese state was not justified by its practicality and the pragma anymore. And finally, uh, the nation found the theocratic idea of the Japanese state written in the 1889 constitution. In 1920s, Japanese literacy rate rise up, and then uh, Japanese nation read their constitutional code by themselves and find the line, uh, the emperor is godly, okay? And they construct a highway to self-destruction. This is a typical book, invite the Japanese nation to be the God's kids. As you can see this, this line, the Japan is a divine state of synthesis and uh, proliferated the Japanese justice all around the world. And this is the consequence. In some, the modern Japanese state emerged in the late 19th century as a pragmatic construct or fiction devised by the elite to prevent Western colonization and enhance the well-being hygiene of its inhabitants. The close association between the Japanese nation and the state led to the cultivation of a populace effectively serving as the state soldiers. However, as the 20th century dawned, disillusionment arose among the nation due to the state's shortcomings, prompting, prompting a search for an alternative state ideal and national identity. By the 1920s, the Japanese nation gravitated toward the, the notion of a theocratic state. Uh, regrettably, the pursuit of this ideal bore tragic consequences culminating in Japan engaging in unwinnable wars and ultimately self-destruction during the early 40s. <clears throat> this is the last part of my presentation. <clears throat> but I detected in the 1920s two potential alternative paths that could have averted the catastrophe of 1940s. The first one was so-called pluralist theory of the state, uh, as you know, which had a strong real-time influence of Harold Lasky's political theory. In my eyes, they were quite similar to the 1880s earliest understanding the practical state. Both 1880s theorists and the 1920s theorists thought of the state sovereignty as a legal fiction beneficial for advancing practical interests. And they share the foundational theoretical distinction between society and the state, as you can see. Uh, in 1920s, 
the leading figure Hasegawa says, society evolves constantly, often without people realizing it, and the state must adapt to these social changes, right? And uh, I detected four other books in this period which contain similar ideas. All of them understood themselves as uh, radical thinkers. Uh, they fail to pose themselves as the true kind of uh, traditionalist. It is regrettable. <clears throat> if they could have strategically presented themselves as uh, true conservatives, the outcome would have been different. This is counterfactual, my opinion. And secondly, uh, we can find very interesting movement in this period by the historians. They argued the origin of the Japanese nation was in late 16th century. Of course, as we know, there was no such thing as a Japanese nation prior to the late 19th century state building. But the historian's effort in this period was quite important. Both the nation's self-understanding as a state soldier and the godly emperor's children is deprived of the thick, the rich historical background. So the Japanese nation easily swings from the one extreme to the other extreme. This is even today. If the nation could have taken the historian's suggestion seriously, they might have surmounted such unstable uh, drifting, and they might have gained the potential to reshape a new Japanese state that is better suited to their own interest. Thank you for listening. That's all for today.